Would you take your Bibles this morning and turn to Philippians chapter 4? And we are going to be talking about standing firm. And uh, little did I know what the science school lesson was today in particular, but uh, a lot of what we had was uh, right up the alley of where we want to go this morning. You know, we stand firm in a lot of areas in, in our life. Uh, our political party choice. <laughs> well, that might be debatable anymore, how firm we want to be with our political party. But at any rate, we, we do make a firm stand and commitment to a political party that we want to be part of. Uh, we stand firm in our allegiance to uh, uh, Michigan sports. The Tigers, well, <laughs> they tried and uh, we would still remain uh, true to them. The Lions, of course, are off to a great start this year and uh, we'll see how that goes. The Red Wings and so forth. And then as parents we stand firm in our discipline of our children. I want to share a little story with you of when I was a teenager. When I was in junior high school, I was prepping to be the sports editor for the school. We had a local newspaper that carried all of our home games and away games, and I was asked to prep, uh, be prepared to take over when I went into high school uh, to do that. And so, of course, I went to the games. Well, I woke up one fine Friday morning and I thought, I don't want to go to school today. <laughs> so I went creeping downstairs and uh, I said to my mom, I don't feel well today. I don't want to go to school. Okay, just go back to bed. Well, my dad worked second shift and I knew when he left for work, and the minute he left for work, I went, got dressed and went down, bouncing downstairs, and I said, I feel better. <laughs> Mom says, you are not going to the game tonight. Come on, Mom. She said, come on, Paul, right back up to bed. You couldn't go to school today. You're not going to any game tonight. Well, let me tell you, I, I learned fast, and my mom was a softie. I, I could talk her into anything. But I, I could hear my dad before he left work, now, Mary, don't you let that boy out of the house tonight to go to any ball game. And I knew that when Saturday morning came and my dad was up, he would say, did you go to the ball game last night? Oh, you old meanie. Well, you know, as I grew older and became a father, uh, our kids tried that sort of thing, that they didn't want to go to school, that they wanted to, they wanted to go uh, do something and they'd misbehave and dad had to put the, the ax down and say, no, you're not going. Well, you know, we, uh, we stand firm in a lot of those things. But the question I want to ask this morning, how firm of a stand do we make when it comes to uh, the, the Lord? And in verse 1, in chapter 4, it says this, Therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. That, that That's a pretty... A uh, kind way to talk to his Paul to talk to his brethren, wasn't it? He said he didn't wasn't mean about it. He just says, "Beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown." Boy, he he went soft soaped him, didn't he? Now I I could have gone downstairs and soft soaped my mom and said, "Well, what a wonderful mom you are!" and uh, uh, yeah, after all, Mom, you will let me go to the ball game and back up the stairs and go to bed. You, you're sick. 
And um, so in our look at the, this passage this morning, I want to look at three areas. Standing firm in the Lord, standing firm in unity and understanding, standing firm with prayer, a proper attitude toward life in this world. First of all, standing firm in the Lord. It goes on uh, in verse 2 to discuss, uh, 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 well, first of all, uh, Paul uh, looks at a backward look in previous chapters. In uh, chapter 1, verse 27, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. And throughout the New Testament, we find that Paul exhorts the uh, believers to walk in a, a manner worthy of, their, of the gospel. And then in chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Your attitude should be the same as that of the Lord. Back up to... Uh, the, one, the passage in chapter 1, verse 27, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. I, I think of some Old Testament uh, people, Job, for instance. You know, Job was a man after God's own heart, and yet God tested him. He lost everything he had. And uh, you would think after a while, he'd say, well, what's God up to anyway? In fact, his wife said, curse God and die. Why wasn't that a wonderful uh, piece of advice from his wife? Guys, uh, watch out for your wives to say that. <laughs> curse God and die. And then in uh, chapter 3, verse 2, watch out for those dogs or false uh, pro prophets. In our Sunday school studies, and by the way, here's a plug for you to come to Sunday school at 9.30 every Sunday morning. Uh, we're currently in the book of First and Second Timothy and Titus, and we would love to have you join us. Uh, in First Timothy chapter 1, verse 20, it mentions Hymenius and Alexander were false teachers. Now these, these were guys that knew the Lord, and yet they wanted to try to convince the people that uh, uh, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't follow the scriptures. And uh, they, Paul said, turn them over to Satan. And they had to be put out of the church. Now, you say, if I disagree with what the pastor says and want to create problems, uh, are you going to ask me to leave the church? Well, you read the scriptures. Uh, and uh, it supports church discipline. However, the main idea of church discipline is for restoration, that people will come back to the Lord. And then a forward look. Paul said in all of this, uh, as a transitional statement, the way we stand firm in the Lord is to keep our eyes fixed on Christ and focus on the fact Christ will bring everything under his control. When we are tempted with uh, false teachers, oh, we, we just fall apart and we, we just, uh, we, we, we want to give up. We have to focus on Christ. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to see in the, uh, uh, chapter this morning. Secondly, stand firm in unity with understanding, verses 2 and 3. I implore unity and sympathy. Trouble reading my Bible this morning. to be the, of the same mind in the Lord. These were two ladies in the church that were servants in the Lord, but they had a little different, difference of opinion with each other. Now, uh, 
Uh, I checked with Matthew Henry commentary and is not quite sure if they were having uh, an issue with each other or with the church. Now, guys, you're not off the hook. Just because it names two ladies here doesn't mean that it's, uh, the difficulties don't exist among men. Of course, you know, uh, all the guys just get along just great. And we don't have any disagreements. We're all just happy-go-lucky and, well, stick around. Uh, we, we do have difficulties. Do I hear an amen from the ladies? <laughs> uh, yes. Going, going back to uh, my uh, episode with my mom, I bet you thought that every pastor was just a very kind gentleman when he was growing up never challenged any discipline from his parents and always, well, yes, mom and dad, I'll do that. Well, I've got you fooled, don't I? <laughs> I? I was there and done that. Well, these ladies weren't the only ones in the church that may have had a difficulty with each other. They were committed and dedicated believers. Well, you know, uh, that happens. And I, we're not sure what the difficulty was. And uh, not seeing eye to eye, even among Christians, is not a new thing. Well, of course, First Baptist Church of Stanton never has people that uh, ever disagree with what goes on in the church or how things are done or what color the chairs are that was selected for the auditorium or... Uh, uh, curtains or you name it. People will use anything and everything to have a dispute. However, mature Christians can resolve their disagreement and come to a mutual understanding. You know, I, I think it's great when we do have difficulties and, and you know, I, I think we can admit that uh, we, we do have people sometimes that we don't get along with. Well, I just don't like the way she looked at me this morning. I just don't like this about her. I don't like, like, like well, who does he think he is anyway? And, uh, you know, we get all bent out of shape when, in reality, we can come to a mutual understanding. And uh, then it goes on uh, uh, in verse 3. And I urge you also, true companion, help those women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Paul exhorted a third member of the church to come alongside these ladies and help them out. However, he didn't pick anybody. He picked someone that he could trust. Now you say, what, what if I have a difficulty with a brother or a sister and I want so-and-so to uh, come in and uh, help out? Well, it might be somebody that means well, but they might also uh, be a negative thing and they could create a, a, a further problem. And I believe that Paul knew that these uh, men could come and help these ladies resolve the tension that existed between them. And then other members of the church, uh, and, and I think this is a good place to say that when we have difficulties in the church, we have uh, people that can't get along with each other, we need to join and, and brothers and sisters and pray for them and to help them along. And then stand firm with a proper attitude toward life in this world, verses 4 through 9. It says, maintain an attitude of reflecting joy. Well, Paul, 
you just don't know how I've been treated. And I, I you don't know what I'm going through. And I have to rejoice. <laughs> I want to grumble and complain to, to the nth degree. In our church in Illinois, I, I had one particular lady that wanted to bend my ear with everything and everything that was going on with her between her and not someone else in the church. And finally, I just say to this lady, you know, if you want to talk about it, you need to come and uh, I'll have my wife come over to the off church office and we'll sit down together and we'll talk about it. And uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. You mean I have to rejoice when I'm going through difficult times? You don't know how often how awful of a life I've had. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Now, do we rejoice in the thing that we're going through? Not necessarily. But we rejoice that God is there to help us through it. Paul prayed with joy. His imprisonment could have turned him against the Lord. But instead he knew he could, act, he could actually help spread the gospel. And furthermore, he had the confidence that the people at the Church of Philippi were praying for him. You know, sometimes we hesitate to let people know that uh, we need prayer. Your, your, Pastor Charlie and I both need your prayers as we minister to, to this flock. And uh, as you know, uh, we have a prayer chain. And there's times that we send something out of an urgency uh, for people to pray. And I appreciate the ladies that uh, handle this. And I just simply make the call to them, knowing that they will take care of it. And, and I've had people who have been prayed for it Thank me uh, that we do that. Down in verse 12, Paul writes, I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer. Paul knew that he uh, knew how to uh, rejoice in the Lord despite his circumstances. What do we do? Well, God, I just don't feel like rejoicing today because after all, you've, you've allowed this infliction to come upon my body. And uh, we moan and groan and we let the whole world know that we uh, have a difficulty. We always say, poor me, and we have a pity party. Well, it's usually a pity party of one, because no one else wants to join in. Maintain an attitude of gentleness and graciousness. Context in this chapter implies that Christians should not only be gentle and gracious among believers, but also with their relationship with non-believers. If you tell a person that you're a Christian, and you just go on and on and on and on with your moaning and groaning, what message are you saying to them? <coughs> You know, I've made this statement before and I'll say it again. The only Bible a person may ever read is you. And what, how do they read you? We are not to seek revenge against those who uh, treat us unfairly, nor can we, are we to overly be vocal about our personal rights. Well, I have a right to God for God to heal me. 
I have my rights. <clears throat> well, you know, uh, unfortunately, kids are being raised in homes today where they, I have my rights. And uh, how do you deal with that? Romans 12, 19. It is mine to revenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Leave it up to God. And uh, he will take care of it. Verse 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Are you a gentle person this morning? Or are you, ah, I don't feel like being gentle this morning. You know, sometimes a person walks into church and they've got it written all over their face. I am out to be, to revenge. And I am out to do this. And uh, we need to be careful. Verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Do we become anxious about things? Oh yeah, we become anxious about things. How are people going to take me? How are people going to uh, handle me? And... Uh, Notice it says, we are to let our supplications be made with thanksgiving. We're going to be having a Thanksgiving Eve service uh, the night before Thanksgiving. You're going to have an opportunity to share a word of thanksgiving. I think sometimes we just need to focus on that, that we will have, be, be thankful for what we have. We want, we want people to know the things we're not thankful for. Well, why did it rain on my party? Why did it do this? Why did it do that? And then verses 6 and 7, maintain an attitude of confidence in the Lord. What would we, what then would we do as Christians when we are surrounded with problems, persecution, or pain? Complain about it? Oh yeah, God, I've been living for you. Why, why are you allowing this to happen? Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything. Sometimes we want to just pick and choose what we want to be thankful for. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. And as the body of believers in the local church, we can become involved in prayer for one another. Uh, you can jot these verses down. Romans 12, 10 through 13, and 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 through 18. The result? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do you have God's peace this morning? Or is your life so rattled with turmoil that you, you can't see it? What a promise. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which happens to be my life's verse. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. We, we want to put our two cents in to the Lord, don't we? Well, God, after all, let me, let me offer you some of my advice. Well... You can try, but I can tell you that you'll fail. And then maintain an attitude of 
positive and right thinking, verses 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Here Paul lists qualities that can be used as uh, criteria in every culture. Is it true? Is God's word true? We were talking about that this morning God, in science school. Is what we read in the Bible true? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for reproof. Is it noble, worthy of reverence? Is it right, moral and upright? Is it pure, chaste and uh, pure? Is it lovely, winsome and pleasing? Is it uh, and, and winning or, or attractive. Well, as we wrap up this morning, a couple of applications. How do I measure up in my firm stand? Do I work to create unity in the body of the local church? Do I reflect a positive attitude toward uh, others? Do I have real confidence in God and the power of prayer? Stand firm. And I pray this morning that as believers we will stand firm in what we believe. You know, uh, Doug Crawford last Sunday was talking about a uh, Christian university not far from us that has tended to sway from being true to God's word. Fortunately, Doug shared with me that someone has come along that is trying to turn things around there. If First Baptist Church of Stanton ever <coughs> sways from the true gospel, you better lock the doors and shut the lights out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for your word. And I just ask that you would help us to stand firm in the Lord. And rejoice always. In Christ's name, amen.